Right, we got a manager there asleep. And this right here is what I'm going to want to make. I hope you can see it. And there's some of the things I took out because I want a different colored material when I go to do it. Pattern first. Oh, good morning, everybody. Welcome back to the channel. It's 322 2024. Uh, what is this? The spring equinox today. And we're going to hop into some of these headlines. And then after that, it's off to Trump's White Horse Spa and family brothel. We're going to get into that at the end of the show today. But I want to get you guys caught up on some headlines, some very important headlines that will shape the next several years in terms of the ideologies that the controllers are pushing. Big, big changes coming to California. We're also going to cover Texas today as well on some more changes regarding the border policies there. And these are very, very important topics to cover because... All of this is meant to prompt you and trigger you to vote. Vote means giving consent. And this is what they need. They need the vow. The Bible says, never swear an oath to another man. And yet the vote is the word vow. And that's what it means. Now, let's hop into this. California just passed... A law that essentially puts homeless people into mental institutions against their will. Now, I grew up in a time when California had lots of mental institutions. In fact, my mother worked for one. My mother worked for Stockton State Hospital years and years ago when I was just a little boy. I remember walking onto the job site with her and into her little office that she had. It was one of her first state jobs in California. And you could see the crazy people running around. And it was, it was a huge campus with trees and all these things. And since then, times have changed. During the Reagan years or after the Reagan years, a lot of these mental institutions were closed down. I can't remember the political reason for that, but suffice it to say, many of the, home, uh, the mental institutions were shut down. Well, here we are back again. And they're talking about beefing up the mental institution state at least in california proposition one passes by a narrow margin gavin newsom calls it a huge victory in california and essentially they're going to throw a bunch of money at mental mental institutions which will then affect the homeless now i also remember back then that it was somewhat difficult to get thrown into a loony bin there were movies made about it, like One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest. But you'll always remember that there, these people, it was exaggerated insanity, right? It was never just the person who was having a bad day. Well, we've now entered an age where if you're having a bad day, you can be thrown into a mental institution. And all it takes is you admitting that you want to harm yourself. This is all it takes. And you can be put in handcuffs, 5150, 72-hour hold. And from that point, you enter the system that could lock you down for more and more time. Medications can be forced on you. And once you're under their sedation and medication, you could literally be lost in the system. Well, now this is going to be rolled out to all the homeless people in California. Let's read a little bit about what California is doing, because California is often the proving grounds for other types of legislation across America. All right, let's see what we can do about this first. 
because this is what we need to work with first. <coughs> now, <coughs> I think what I want to do is make three of these. So, oh, come on, why do you do that? <coughs> Too light. <laughs> Alright, let's see this. Go down here. Uh, okay, I wonder if I can get four out of this side. No, that's not going to work. So we're going to do it this way. I don't have an iron. It's all the way in the very back room. So, okay. So what I'm going to do is cut that down. Make it smoother. Alright. Uh, no. I'm not gonna worry about all that. Oh, come on. Yeah, I'm gonna go iron this down. Now, if you think this is no big deal, let's read this. This is crazy, and I believe this is the setup. This is the setup because they're already trying to say that people that are anti-vaxxers, for instance, may have some kind of mental problem because we don't go along with what they say to do because we want to live outside the system. Let's read this. Prop 1, the ballot measure supported by Gavin Newsom that he says will be a radically different approach to tackling California's homelessness crisis. Passed on Wednesday evening, according to the Associated Press, this measure, by narrow margin, 50%, of course, it's a 50% margin. Now, I don't believe any of these votes anymore. I believe all voting is rigged, all of it, on, out, on every level. And, and if they don't get the result they want, they'll still pass whatever they want to pass. We saw this with gay marriage in uh, California. People voted against it, but they still passed it. All of a sudden... Then, at that point, it was rolled out to the rest of America. Prop 1 will restructure California's Mental Health Service Act and channel billions of dollars to mental health. Billions of dollars to mental health. Now, think of the ramifications of this. California is already suffering from a deficit. And now they're going to channel billions of dollars to mental health and addict addiction treatment facilities, particularly for those who are in crisis or experiencing chronic homelessness. So you're not allowed to be homeless anymore is basically what this bill says. Chronic homelessness is now a mental condition. $6.4 billion bond to fund to such facilities as well as veteran housing. Notice how they wrap in the veteran housing with it to, to sweeten the deal, to make it more palatable. Critics of the measure, such as supervisory boards in conservative counties across the state, say the measure defund, defunds local services that counties are already providing to go toward funding a one-size-fits-all approach. And they're doing the one-size-fits-all approach so that the government can control it. That's what this is about. They can't control the counties and smaller you know, um, things that are already handling this. So, disability rights advocates and some mental health groups also said that the treatment, treatment not tense approach, treatment not tense, may subject people with mental health issues into the into involuntary detentions, and this is what we said was going to happen. Now, Newsom went on to X and tweeted out. A huge victory. Of course, it's a huge victory because guess what? This creates a whole entire new bureaucracy of mental health. I would never go into this as a as an uh, occupation, 
But if you were a betting man, you would know that, hey, I can go to mental health. And there would be jobs for you with all this money being thrown at this. So what is this all about? What's up here? we got to read between the headlines, right? Well, anybody that does not accept the American paradigm in California doesn't live by the rules, which includes living in a house, paying rent, paying taxes, having a job, or accepting vaccines, you could be subjected to this end result, being put in the system. Now, What's really happening here? Well, the answer to California's homelessness isn't about mental health. It has very little to do with mental health. You see, what happens is, this is a snowball effect. It's a snowball effect. And what happens is, a person could find themselves struggling and struggling and struggling. What do people do when they struggle? They cope. They cope with the struggle, right? You guys have talked to hundreds of people that have been through this. You try in life, but then as life gets you down, as forces come against you, principalities, you're just beat down over and over again, and a lot of people just give up. And once you give up, you're at a, you're at a point where you're just coping. You're coping. So you have coping mechanisms, which can include, but are not limited to, drugs, vices, alcohol and as you go down this snowball effect these things begin to encroach into your life and next thing you know you're addicted and next thing you know your mental health starts to decline and next thing you know the only option you feel like you have is homelessness now i'm not against homelessness i feel like jesus and the disciples were essentially homeless they gleaned the fields they walked from town to town they had no homes They gave all that up. So I believe that there could be angels among the homeless. And that there could be very important disciples among the homeless. So I'm never going to knock homeless people. But the problem really is with California, it's not really a mental health issue. It's basically the bureaucracy. The bureaucrats have incentivized the very worst parts of homelessness, haven't they? By handing out needles. And it's the bureaucrats that have dest- that are destabilizing American life, destabilizing American economy, with all these things going on. The burden with illegals that that we can that we have no business trying to take on. You know, Re and I were talking this morning about illegal immigration and what all that entails, and we were comparing other countries because he and I both at one time in our lives thought about expatriating leaving America. Well, guess what? If any of you have ever looked into leaving America to go to another country and be in another country legally, you would think that, oh, the rest of the world would welcome us, right? They would welcome Americans because America is the greatest country in the world and we help everybody, right? We should be able to just walk through doors, right? No, wrong. When you try to expatriate to other countries, there are requirements. You have to have an education or you have to be in a specific job role. Some countries are very, very specific. I remember one time I was looking at Australia, and I was like, hmm, it'd be cool to live in Australia. And they're like, nope, you have to have a very specific job. It has to be in the medical care industry. We need medical care. We need nurses and doctors. So if you're not a nurse or a doctor, you can't come to Australia. Or you have to be married to someone in Australia. Other countries, you had to have a minimum income that you brought with you in the form of a retirement. Some of those incomes were as high as two to $3,000 a month that you had to show that you were making before you could go into the country. And so why is it that all these other countries have these requirements and enforce them, right? But if we in America just let people come over and we don't enforce these requirements, nor do we have such high requirements, right? So what's really going on here? Well, it's the destabilization of the last country on earth that has any amount of freedom. That's what's going on here. There, This influx of people is happening intentionally by our governments, both right and left, to destabilize our country. And everything else in between is smoke and mirrors and honey traps, is what it is. Okay, 
the whole, you know, let's let Antifa burn America to the ground. But then when a bunch of right-leaning people show up somewhere and start no fires and do no looting or very little looting, I think that, I don't think there was any looting. A little bit of property might have been destroyed and that was it. There were no fires set. Those, all those people go to jail for sedition. You see the, the big honey trap there? And all of it was fueled by the anger of the people on the right because nothing was being done about m immigration. And they thought that Trump was going to help them. And they were mad because he didn't win. And they're like, oh, here we go. The borders are going to open with Biden. And that's what enraged people to show up. Do you see the big rope-a-dope now? And, you know, Trump is now claiming he's going to get tough on these on these states. Well, the time to get tough on the states was during the pandemic, when we lost essentially all of our rights, forced to lock down, forced or near forced to inject things in our body against our will. Okay, so... I don't believe him when he says he's going to get tough on states about immigration and things like this. Because he could have done it before. Because, to me, immigration is national security. That's what it is. There shouldn't even be a discussion about enforcing illegal people from coming into a country like ours. Especially with all of the technology we have. Especially with the surveillance state that we have. Instead... They're po pointing the surveillance state at American citizens, right? Going through and uh, digitally harassing us. If you mess up on your tax return or you trade cryptocurrency, you get an audit. Or, you know, you know coming after you with, uh, you know, different things that they do with the technology, the technocracy. Instead of pointing it at where it needs to be pointed, which is illegal immigration, so we can shore up our economy. And so that the cost of goods doesn't cost so much. And the labor is fixed so that people can have jobs and make a normal wage instead of competing with an illegal element that is going around and stealing those jobs. So that's what's really going on. Now, what else is going on in California? Well, the other problem in California that they're ignoring which has nothing to do with mental health, is the housing in California. Housing is so inflated and arbitrary in California that one neighborhood right next to another neighborhood could have five times the amount of rent. Literally, you could go one mile, and from one mile to the next. All right, let's work on the bonnet. One place could have... $800 a month for rent, and you go one mile the other direction, and it's $4,000 a month for rent. Now, I've seen this happen. If you look at places like San Jose, just because it's in proximity to great jobs, just to rent a two- or three-bedroom house or apartment, it's like three or $4,000 a month. Who can afford that? How sustainable is that? It's not. And California has no answers. And so, of course, people are going to be homeless. We've all heard it. I mean, we're all, I'm preaching in the choir here, but you guys all know. We've seen the stories of, you know, people that work and worked in Silicon Valley that are living in a trailer, homeless in a trailer, because they don't want to pay $6,000 a month for rent. Even though they're making the money to pay that, who in their right mind would want to do that? I've myself personally known people who work in San Jose. And instead of living in the house that they purchased, it doesn't make sense. So they shack up, shack up with people that they know. These are people making hundreds of thousands of dollars a year, choosing roommates because they're trying to save money and make money on their real estate investment. It's unbelievable what's happening. This should not be happening in California or anywhere in America if we claim to be the greatest country in the world. And all of this is by design. It's all orchestrated to eliminate the middle class, to shake up economies and everything else. So, as it stands now, the homeless in California are about to be rounded up 
And these will be the final nails in the coffin for the great takeover of California. It's almost complete. They've, a lot of people have already left. They, they can't get their homes insured anymore because of the natural disasters, the unnatural disasters, we should call them. And so you can't, you can't pay a mortgage without insurance. And so if you can't get insurance, my mom's dealing with this right now. Real case scenario here. My mom's looking. She got dropped by her insurance. My mom's been paying. My mom's 75 years old, been paying insurance her whole life, paid her mortgage on time for her whole life. And now she's got to, like, figure out how she's going to get insurance in case she wants to refinance her house. Because mortgages require insurance. So this is another controlled demolition. And after a while, California will be an empty shell. Everything will be automated for the rich who are able to stay there and enjoy vast stre stretches of emptiness. And so the, the next thing they need to do is root out the homelessness. They'll create another bureaucracy, stack them all up in these supermax prisons, which is basically what they will amount to. They'll call it mental health, but it'll basically be a prison. And I'm so glad that I left California when I did. I knew the writing was on the wall, and it's gotten ten times worse. Now, let's get into some of these other stories. There's lots to cover today. NASA, listen to this, is now claiming that they quietly and successfully diverted an asteroid with a bomb. Now, not that I believe this, because I don't believe in all this, but wouldn't this make the perfect cover story for some kind of event heading into the eclipse? Right? I mean, look at this. March 20th, this was just a couple days ago, you guys. NASA collision with asteroid Dimorphos changed both its trajectory and shape. Dimorphos. That means two... I don't know, changing into two. I don't know what dimorphos means, but it means something. Look at this. When NASA sent its DART spacecraft to slam into, oh, what could go wrong with that? You guys, this is the this is the trope of science fiction movies, apocalypse movies. Oh, we're going to divert the asteroid, and then they realize they broke it up into too many pieces, or they kicked it in the wrong direction. And now it's heading directly for Earth, right? So they divert this dimorphos in 2022. The U.S. Space Agency demonstrated that it had a, was possible to change a celestial object's trajectory, if needed, to protect Earth. It turns out that the collision changed not only the asteroid's path, but its shape as well. The asteroid, which before the DART encounter looked like a ball that was a bit plump in the waist, now appears... To be shaped like a watermelon, or technically a triaxial ellipsoid. The prevailing understanding is that Dimorphos is a loosely packed agglomeration of debris, ranging from dust to gravel to boulders. Oh yeah, so you know, yeah, we just split broke pieces off of this thing and stumbling through space. Now we have no idea where all the pieces are going. Thus, its global strength is quite low, allowing deformation much more easily than for a solid monolithic body. <laughs> These people. This is unbelievable. So, here's the thing here, and this is what they're saying, that a DART spacecraft landed on it and, like, exploded and changed the shape and trajectory of a meteor. Unbelievable. You know, this is one possible cover story that could coincide with the upcoming eclipse in just two weeks. No. What else is going on? Well, NASA is also deploying teams of college students to release balloons along the eclipse path. This has now become a thing. We reported on this back in 2017 with the 99 red balloons. We saw that NASA was essentially launching all these balloons along the eclipse path to test what radiation would do to... A particular bacteria I can't remember which kind of bacteria it was it's been so long but anyway they sent up these balloons there weren't exactly 99 but we were on to something because it seemed 
that seemed to be a ritual to signal the coming pandemic. The eclipse path was back then in 2017, followed the exact path that COVID took from Seattle all the way down to Georgia. And so this was that was a ritual to signal the coming pandemic. And we talked about that as well. We talked about um, celestial events coinciding with pandemics back before the pandemic happened. And how this 99 red balloon seemed to signal something replicating out of control and sacrifice. So here they are, the Eclipse Ballooning Project, EBP, and they've got all these college students across the Eclipse Path that are sending these up into the air. Let's read a little bit of this because there may be some clues within this. Oh, let me back up a little bit. Gosh, I forgot to talk about Texas. Do immigration laws blocked again? And then we'll get into this NASA thing. I wanted to make sure and cover this. So they just a couple days ago blocked this law that allows for law enforcement to interfere with anything dealing with migration, immigration, right? And so this is tying the hands of law enforcement. It's causing chaos in the streets and violence in the streets as citizens are very upset that the law enforcement won't do anything about these illegals crossing the border. And when they pass these new laws like this or block these laws, it's a green light for illegals to come in. Now, what is this about? Well, this is because they're trying to get trigger people to vote for Trump. That's what this is all about. So they're playing these little antics so they can bring in Trump for the final nail in the coffin of America. To finally bring home the surveillance state, 6G and beyond, and complete and total control. People on the right will give up all their rights. They'll suspend constitutional rights just so Trump can get it done. They'll say, forget about all this other stuff. We don't need the Constitution. Just let Trump do what he needs to do to fix everything. He's also hailing himself as a Messiah now, retweeting Messiah types of of tweets, or not tweets, but um, on his website, True Social, retweeting people, saying that he's the Messiah, reposting it. And so this is where it's all headed, and people are believing this stuff. So, notice how the only way they can get a result is to create the chaos first. I want to be very clear about that. In order to get the result, they have to create the chaos first. They have to create the problem, then get the reaction, and then already deliver a prepackaged solution. And people will go in on this. They'll say, oh, we do need a national ID so we can keep track of the illegals. We do need red flag laws, extreme risk protection orders for crazy people with guns. We do need. And so basically, he's going to give us the same result that we rejected from the Democrats. He'll give us that and the people will accept it. They'll be like, we do need that. We'd rather have Trump do it than the left. At least we know what he's doing. And this is what they're going after. Same result that we rejected from the Democrats is how all this works.